Okay, um, good evening everybody. And um, I think we, we have a quorum between the physically present and the virtually present members. Uh, so we will call this uh, meeting to order. If we could start with a roll call so everyone is aware of who is uh, present in both formats, that would be great. Chairman Bakey. Uh, here. Vice Chair Slagle. Here. Member Butenice. Present. Member Liang. Present. Member Gallivan. Here. Member Shea. Here. Member DePeza. Here. Member McCall. Member Linehan. Okay, well, we have a quorum. Um, our first uh, order of business tonight is the uh, review and approval of the September uh, 30th minutes for the, the board. Do we have a motion with respect to those minutes? A motion at approval. All right. Motion. All right. Thank you. Any edits or comments? No. All right. This, uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Aye. Aye. Motion, motion carries. Thank you. Um, now we'll uh, uh, move into the um, more substantive part of the evening this evening. This is very exciting. So this will be the first time um, the Lowell Community Preservation Committee actually hears, uh, formally, hears applications for projects. Uh, we have gone through the eligibility review process, which was um, very enlightening, and it's really exciting to see the interest. And now I guess uh, it will be even more exciting, I think, to hear more about those projects uh, from folks tonight, as well as from folks who are uh, supportive of those projects. Um, what we will be doing, I think we have quite a few people in the room, and I suspect we have quite a few more people who have joined us virtually, so uh, we do need to be cognizant of time this evening. Um, we'd like to ask that the, the way we will do this with each of the uh, projects, we will ask the applicant uh, uh, or the proponent of the, of the proposal to um, speak for about five minutes. Uh, we will then ask for um, any other uh, people who are present who would like to speak uh, either uh, you know, on those particular uh, applications. Uh, then we will give an opportunity for the board members to ask questions of the proponents. So there will be a little more time for getting into some detail there. Uh, and, and that will be how we will approach things this evening. We are not um, going to actually be deliberating this evening. This is the first of three um, uh, meetings where we will be uh, hearing in detail about the proposed projects. And until we have finished uh, hearing about all of them, it's not particularly fair to start deliberating on any of them. And our deliberation meetings will occur um, starting after that process. So. We appreciate everybody's patience. We're all kind of getting going on this program and, and getting it started. We're very excited about it, but uh, we, we do have to all be a little patient uh, as we get it ramped up. And uh, speaking of patience, um, our very first uh, agenda item this evening, uh, 243 Worthen Street. Uh, we have received a request from the applicant um, uh, that uh, they've asked to be continued to our December meeting. Uh, for um, uh, personal reasons, and um, I would like to uh, have a motion from the board to accept that request for continuance. Motion to continue. Second. All right, thank you. Uh, any discussion on that? Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Anyone Aye. 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 All right, that motion carries. So now uh, our next, up, next uh, item this evening is a CPA application for Clemente Park. The Clemente Park Committee has applied uh, seeking $110,000 of CPA funds for an outdoor recreation project. The applicant proposes to use the funds for improvements to Clemente Park, including upgrades to the playground equipment, benches, and the basketball court. I presume we have someone here uh, to speak on, on behalf of this project? Hi, I'm going to um, speak on, give a little history about the Clemente Park Committee, and then I'm going to have my other committee member, Rathanak, speak about the upgrade that we are um, proposing. So um, my name is Sam Bo. I am a member of the Clemente Park Committee. Um, our committee is made up of individuals who's very passionate about the city of Lowell, proud to be um, from the city of Lowell. So we either have lived here, lives here now, have family here, or um, live and shop around here. Um, we were organized. Um, we were created back in 2011, and we're most um, well known for our Lowell Khmer New Year celebration at Clemente Park 
our first event, uh, event was in 2012. Aside from that, we also do a lot of the uh, annual cleanup around the park. We work with other volunteer groups as well as city agencies. Um, so yes, so I just wanted to kind of provide a little bit of a, of a history there of our group. Again, we are completely 100% volunteer based. And um, I'm just going to hand um, the mic over to Ratanat to speak about the upgrade. Do we have the PowerPoint up? Hello, um, my name is Ratanak. I was here during the last meeting. It's great to see all you guys again. Um, so for the other Comente Park member, uh, she gave like a brief history, a small part about the park. Um, I was wondering if you could um, skip the slide to slide five. So uh, the one previous before this one. Thank you. So as you can see on the slide, it says, be the change you wish to see in the world. We would like to upgrade Comente Park to make it safe for our community and our youth. And we want to change the way people think of the area. In the early 2000s, the park was known for a dangerous spot where gang members used to hang out, fight, and do criminal activities. Um, a lot of people still to this day will not step foot in this park because of that. We would like to host more events here to show that it is not how it was back then, and we want to bring the community together. Previous events that we did at the park this year were volleyball tournaments, sporting good giveaways for the youth, and community cookouts. Unfortunately today, the playground is in bad shape and not being used by the children in our community. The playground has been taken over by the homeless, and that is a problem that all of us in the city of Lowell should help out with. We believe that an upgrade to the park will be able to host more events, bring life back to the park, and we can come together to help find a better spot for the homeless in the area. Can you please um, go to the next slide? So on this slide, it shows a Community Preservation Act survey results, and the um, majority of the survey participants are in the Highland area. Clemente Park is a key location. Um, it connects downtown Lowell to Cambodia Town and right into the Highlands. Upgrading the park would make the area look a lot better with CMAA, the Boys and Girls Club, and local businesses already in the area. And a high percentage in the survey says that parks and playgrounds are very important to the area. And it also says that participants visiting parks more than one, one time a week. Can you please go to the next slide? Um, for, for this, we have a few photos of the playground. So this is a photo of the playground equipment. Most of the equipment is not in great shape. The paints are chipping off. The equipments are damaged. And on the bottom right photo, you can see that um, there's supposed to be a bridge there, and it's not there anymore. Can you please go to the next slide? On this photo, you can see that the borders around the park are missing, and that could be a safety hazard and a trip hazard for the kids. And on this is um, photos of the basketball court. Uh, just similar to the skate park, the ground is not even, and it has cracks all over, and the paint are not really showing. It is hard to dribble the basketball and it won't be able to tell where you are in the court. And then um, the middle poles that are sticking up off the ground where the benches used to be, that is a safety hazard for the people playing basketball because they can eventually trip and end up getting stabbed by the poles. And then on this slide, you could just see um, other benches around 
the part that needs to be upgraded, um, all of them are really just falling apart. And then for the last slide, um, we just want to say that upgrading Clemente Park will help make the area more appealing and increase the foot traffic and it helps make the area more safe. Thank you. Thank you. Before we, we'll call you back up for questions and answers, but I'd like to give an opportunity if there's anyone else uh, here in the room who would like to um, comment on this proposal. This would be an opportunity for you. Uh, seeing no one, is there anyone online uh, virtually who would like to comment on this proposal? Okay, well, I guess if you all wanna come back up, we'll ask if any of the members have questions. I have a question. Um, <clears throat> before we go into this, looking at the equipment and everything, have you sort of looked at the entire park and sort of like what would be the cost of revamp or rebuild the entire car, uh, park itself instead of just upgrading it? I, I, I understand that. <laughs> Hard. <laughs> I'm just saying that um, you know you know how it, it is sort of the you know I, I really like your presentation where it is the sort of like the hub of the beginning of the Cambodia town and uh, you know build up the economic development in the areas and stuff. Um, I'm just saying that uh, it, it is good to rebuild it. Uh, some of the equipment that's uh, I'm, I'm just saying that. Was there any way, did you guys thought of like, let's revamp the park, you know, based on, you know, A, B, C, D, like for example, the volleyball, the skate park, or the basketball park, looking at the bigger picture of the entire cost? I think our proposal, it's kind of touches upon that. So I know we are proposing upgrade of the playground, upgrade of the basketball court and some of the benches, but in upgrading, we're proposing to purchase um, items that will make it up to date, make it more user friendly and um, accessible for everyone um, with, with all levels of abilities. So in a sense, yes, we're proposing an upgrade, but in a sense, it will be, um, you know, um, bringing value and making it better. Thank you. Um, the reason I'm asking is that uh, we, you have not received some of the quote. I'm just wondering if $110,000 would be enough to sort of, uh, you know, rebuild and upgrade the, the, the whole thing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, oh, stay, yeah. just stay there. there. There may be a few more questions. So. <laughs> No, I, I was just going to uh, kind of a, and kind of a follow up to that. One of the things we mentioned in the last time you were here was to sit down and have a conversation with uh, the folks from the Parks Department and the Department of Planning and Development. Um, did, did, did you do that? And did they have uh, any comments about the proposed budget? And did you work with them to come up with these numbers? Is that? Yes, we met with the DPD. Um, um, was it Camillo? Yes. Camillo and some of the folks from there. So they, that's kind of where we got our new number based on a discussion and suggestions from them. Um, we're waiting on a list of approved vendors to actually narrow down to the exact dollar amount because there's this, um, you know, the, the purchase and the work that has to be done on, um, by the city. Um, so we kind of, that's the ballpark number that we um, um, came up with, but to get a true number, we um, need the list of vendors and we can provide an updated um, number based on that. And just just a follow up on that question in your meeting with them have they agreed to assuming the project is funded or in the event that the project is funded they've agreed to assist you with that assist you with assist you with assist you with assist you have they have they agreed to assist you with the process of both um, sort of completing the 
scoping for what those, the details of what those improvements might be for procuring the actual uh, equipment or contractors that may be necessary and for helping oversee that work? Are they, have they indicated a, a willingness to partner with you on those things? Um, from my understanding, what I walked away with was that, yes, we we're going to be working with them because we get, again, we have to work with approved vendors and we can't actually do the work ourselves. So we're going to need them, their guidance and suggestions on where to go and next steps. They, um, we have been provided, um, you know, advice that to prioritize the items that we want to address first. And we, I think we have called that out in our application. Okay. Um, I also have a, a question. The Community Preservation Act, uh, we, we are specifically prohibited from funding turf. Um, and I think what they mean by that is the kinds of turf like is out at Cauley Stadium for a, an athletic field. You've used the term playground turf in your application. I'm not actually 100% sure that what you mean by that is the same thing as what is prohibited. So can you clarify a little bit what you mean by the playground turf? Okay, by clarifying, I hope it doesn't count against us. <laughs> <laughs> well, it may count for you actually, because okay. at the moment we're worried it's not eligible. Okay, <laughs> so, so the, our idea was the, we seen the, is it the poured rubberized um, padding that it can have a bounce to it, it's safer, it's durable, it lasts longer, um, yeah. less up, you know, less upkeep. So um, that's what I think, let me see, what's a good spot that has that? Um, outside of Chinatown, um, um, there's like a little playground area with a rubberized mat. So that's what we're um, referring to as the turf, not, not necessarily the astro turf that you'll find at Cauley Stadium. Got it, okay. And um, I guess if I could ask uh, Dylan, if you could um, do a little research for us in, ahead of when we have our deliberation meeting to just confirm for us if the poured in place or, or um, set in place playground surface is eligible or not under that turf exclusion. That would be helpful. Any other questions from the members? Any, any questions from any of the members who are remote at the moment? All right. Well, hearing none, thank you very much. And um, we will, again, we'll be looking to uh, th this meeting, our November meeting and our December meeting, we'll be hearing proposals like this. And then um, in our January meetings when we'll be deliberating. And th that will be an open public meeting as well. Okay. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. All right, our next uh, item of business this evening is uh, 1413 and 1415 Varnum Avenue, also known as Rowley's Farm. Uh, the Lowell Parks and Conservation Trust, Mass Audubon, and Mill City Grows uh, have applied to the Community Preservation Committee seeking uh, $1,500,000 of CPA funds for an open space and outdoor recreation project. The applicant proposes to utilize the funding to acquire, preserve, and redevelop Rowley's Farm into an urban wildlife sanctuary, urban farmland, and an education center. The project would preserve the area comprising of roughly 20 acres. Do we have someone um, here to speak on behalf of this project? Yes, thank you. I'm Jane Calvin, Executive Director of the Lowell Parks and Conservation Trust. And Tonight I have with me Bob Wilbur, the Director of Land Protection at Moss Audubon, and Jessica Wilson, the Executive Director of Mill City Grows. Uh, <clears throat> our project Lowell's Last Farm will protect the parent farm operated by generations of the family over 70 years. Most people know this as the farm where they can get a really great Christmas tree or the tastiest tomatoes and corn. Uh, next slide, please. This 20-acre property has been on the radar for the Lowell Parks and Conservation Trust since the 1990s. And our planning in earnest came about with rumors of Rowley Perrin's retirement. Our three organizations started meeting three years ago this fall to develop the partnership we have now to protect this special place. Uh, you'll see that um, we've met several times out on the property there as a, as a partnership. Through a Mass Development Collaborative Workplace Seed Grant, we developed the vision document at left, which notes the trail network pond, viewscape, community gardens, cultivated fields, and joint office and program space. 
Next slide. This is an aerial photograph of the farm. This is not just a once in a lifetime opportunity. This is the last chance to protect significant acreage in Lowell to ensure that our grandchildren's grandchildren can experience Lowell's undeveloped landscape. We want to acknowledge that the rolling hills of this tree farm are the unceded lands of the Pawtucket and Penacook people. The property's proximity to both the Merrimack River and the Lowell Drake at Tingsboro State Forest provides a critical corridor for wildlife, from coyote to deer and even bobcat have been seen on this property, to migratory bird species and native flora. We will be developing a master plan which will entail grassland and woodland restoration among other projects, all persons, trails, programming space, and a permanent hub for Mill City Grows operations. This planning process will involve collective citywide and neighborhood input. The property will be open to the public and will address community needs as identified in several citywide planning documents. Ultimately, this resource we are protecting is for the broader community in perpetuity forever. Next slide. Rolly Perrin is seen here on the lower right. He and his siblings have signed options agreements for the purchase within a two to three year timeline, which provides us a, long, a longish timeline to fundraise and allows Rolly the opportunity to continue his tree farm operations for the next three seasons. Uh, we'd be happy to go over the timeline in more detail if you have questions. The Trust in Mass Audubon, both nationally accredited land trusts, will be acquiring the two parcels, and we have already begun conversations with the city about holding conservation restrictions on the property. Um, the city has been involved in this project since the very inception. Finally, Mill City Grows is an equal partner in this project and will have long-term access to the property for their farming operations and food justice programs. Next slide. CPA funding at this early stage in our fundraising will demonstrate strong local support and commitment, enabling us to leverage and attract outside funders. The scale of this project makes this a critical element of our fundraising campaign. Once again, on behalf of the partnership, thank you so much for your consideration. Thank you. Um, as, as we did with the previous one, I'd like to invite if there are other people uh, in the chamber who would like to um, speak on behalf of this project or about this project. Hello, um, my name is Jessica Wilson. I'm the executive director of Mill City Grows. Um, I think Jane has gone over all of the details of the proposal, but I did want to um, you know, just get up and share that this um, project is so incredible and I think, you know, would be a major um, opportunity for um, large space for food justice and food education work um, in the city of Lowell. So, as you know, Mill City Grows has um, worked over the past 10 years to convert approximately six acres of unused land into food growing land um, here in Lowell. and. Um, those are all very small parcels and we love you know, using them to bring food to the community in a variety of ways. This um, project would actually give us the opportunity for the first time to have space where we grow, um, where we can distribute and where we can also educate folks all in the same space. Um, that I think the vision of being able to have you know, field trips with hundreds of children you know, coming out to see the farm and participate in environmental education activities um, is something that would actually be possible in this space. Um, and at our last um, trip to the farm, we also noticed that this is, um, there's a bus stop, a bus route that drives right by there, making it incredibly accessible to everybody within the city. So uh, we're really excited to be a part of this project. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Bob Wilbur, Director of Land Conservation for Mass Audubon. Uh, Mass Audubon is an organization started in Boston 125 years ago by two women. Uh, 10 years before National Audubon Society was formed, first Audubon organization in the world at that time. Uh, we're extremely excited about this opportunity and we're very, very pleased to be working with two partners to my left here, their organizations. Uh, we think it's a, a perfect fit 
Uh, Mass Audubon has been very active in establishing wildlife sanctuaries in urban settings for about 20 years. Um, statewide, we have about 100 wildlife sanctuaries. 23 of them are staffed. Um, we are uh, very committed to education, especially of youth, and providing opportunities to experience nature firsthand. Uh, to give you an idea, last year we had uh, upwards of 12,000 day campers across the state. Um, and with our new strategic plan, we're committed to creating 20 new green spaces across Massachusetts in urban settings in the next five years. This location is our flagship opportunity should we be able to proceed with it. We're extremely excited about this and very um, uh, excited about the potential for uh, the community here in Lowell. Thank you. Do we have, I don't think we have anyone else in the chamber to speak on this. Do we have anyone uh, on, <coughs> virtually on, who would like to speak on this uh, proposal? Oh, hearing, hearing none, uh, do we have questions from the members of the committee? Uh, I actually do. <laughs> I have a couple of questions, and I, I, I'm hopeful that um, you can go into the timeline a little bit. Um, uh, obviously, you know, everybody can do the math, and we have a lot of requests this year that outnumber the funding that the, the committee has, and so. Um, um, one one thing I think we asked folks to, folks to do at their uh, their eligibility hearing was uh, try to give us an idea about whether phasing funding would be um, possible with the projects that they're proposing. So I'm wondering if she could speak to that issue with as it as it uh, links to the timeline of the purchase here. Sure, I'd I'd be happy to. Um, I also want to clarify, I, I skipped one sentence, that we are applying under open space, not under recreation, just to make that really clear. Uh, so there are, there, are, there are three parcels on this property, but for discussion purposes here, we've excluded the home uh, because we know that that's not eligible for the CPA. Uh, so there are two parcels. There's an upper parcel and a lower parcel. Uh, the upper parcel, um, we have 11, uh, uh, 23 months from today to acquire that parcel. Um, and we have that signed agreement. We were not able to, due to a medical emergency, to have that at the last when we submitted. Um, but um, the family has been able to since sign. So that's for the upper acreage. We have 23 months. The lower acreage, um, we have 30 months from October 13th. And this is pretty clearly outlined on the, um, in the, uh, on the, just below the budget. But we have 30 months. Uh, the parents have asked us uh, to wait until after Christmas of 2023 to acquire the property so they can have three full seasons of up harvesting the Christmas trees on site. So we have from then until April of 2024 to acquire the property. A year after that, we have the, op we, we have the option to buy the house. We will be buying the house within a year after that. So we would welcome phased funding. <laughs> OK, so, so we're talking about um, um, <coughs> You anticipating needing the, the 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 funding for um, the the first purchase or partially spread out for both purchases? Do do you have a, a thought process as to how you're going to allocate funding, or is that something you depends on the fundraising? It depends on the fundraising, and we will work with what you are able to make available and the timing you're able, able to make it. We specifically extended the time, time frame. One, one of our reasons that we extended the time frame 
was because we wanted to be able to have multiple CPA cycles to go through and to be able to spread those funds out because we know that this is a big ask mm -hmm. and an important ask. Just fo following up a little bit on that, um, the Obviously, the need that you've outlined in your budget is, is a lot larger than the amount you're asking us for. Um, you know, the ability of this committee to fund even at the level you're asking is not certain. I mean, again, it may, may work out, but it's not certain. Uh, what is your plan both for the rest of the money you need if your full application is funded and whether that plan is able to support if you were funded at a level less than what you were asking uh, by, the, by the committee? At what point is, I don't want you to put a number out there, but is there a, um, I guess is there a situation where the committee could allocate a sizable chunk of its resources, but the partnership would be unable to complete the transaction because of the balance of what's needed? Um, or, or do you feel, uh, how do you feel you're gonna prevent that from happening? I I'd like to open it up to the partnership. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to give them a chance to speak. <laughs> okay. Uh, it's a very fair question, and uh, I'll do my best to answer it. So we, we are beginning uh, the process of uh, fundraising, uh, identifying prospects. Um, as Jane just mentioned, uh, the two contracts have been signed just recently. Um, we one of the benefits of having three organizations come together is that they each have relationships with funders and um, funding prospects that they can bring to the table. That said, uh, the acquisition cost alone is a daunting number with almost $4 million in total that needs to be raised. Um, more than $4 million, including the house. And, and, uh, and the total cost of full development of the facility on the site is probably closer to $10 million. And that's a longer term endeavor, but uh, something we're committed to. Um, so we are, the community preservation funding is uh, no question um, a, a big part of our strategy for uh, getting the fundraising um, going and having it be feasible long term. Um, knowing, maybe I'll just say it this way. So I, I, I chaired the Community Preservation Committee in my town for 12 years, so I'm very familiar with what you're all doing and I appreciate what you're doing, by the way. Um, and I understand the challenges. I understand the uh, requests exceeding your your ability to fund at, at a time. So all of that I understand and, and respect. Uh, it, it's difficult for us to give a concrete, um, definitive response to the question at this moment in time. Uh, one thing that you might consider, I'm trying to be as helpful as I can be in my response. Uh, one thing that you might consider is um, making a commitment to the project this year with an anticipation that we would come and make another request next year and, and give you an update at that point of where we are. Mm -hmm. uh, again, just trying to be as helpful as I can be in the response. Appreciate that, thank you. Jessica, did you want to add anything to that? Or? <coughs> um, I think the, the other piece that I did definitely want to share, so as Bob said, we have you know, begun our fundraising plan. We're building a great pipeline of other donors. I think because um, you know, this is an important Lowell project, it, being able to go to those funders, knowing that we have a significant contribution from the CPA would show that the city is, is truly behind this project. Um, and so I think that, you know, I know, as you said, the ask is beyond um, you know, what's available for this year, but knowing that there was a, that a significant contribution towards it would definitely um, help us to leverage funds from other folks who I think are, are excited about the project but want to know that there is, you know, a great support um, from the city of Lowell. 
Um, the, I, I also, on that same, along those same lines, in, in um, quickly doing the math on the dates that you provided, it could be as little as only two CPA cycles that would be complete in terms of the final process of the city council actually um, approving the funding uh, prior to the end of your option periods. Um, in the event that the uh, committee feels that it wants to support this project, but it might even want to support this project for more no. than two cycles in some manner, is there okay. any sort of, um, you know, bit, frankly, debt financing or anything else that you can do to borrow against <laughs> a subsequent commitment that might actually extend beyond uh, your option period? Bring me up to speed a little bit and we I, d I have seen the emails. Who's been in touch yes, with I you? Yes, I do think if that uh, what's was the, something what's that... The, latest, uh, the status or... or the, the, I'm sorry. Of, um, could, could I ask um, whoever what, at what home you want is, um, has their mic open to mute it, please? Sorry. Thank you. <clears throat> Pardon ahead. me. Uh, I, would, I think if that, if that was something that the committee uh, offered to us as an option, we would work with that. Okay. Thank you. Options for bridge loans and programmatic investment loans that we would have access to. Okay, that makes some sense, right? That makes some sense. Okay. So I'm going to, I, is it Lamb Skinner that is in sort of the supervisor of these people? Yeah. Okay, so it's Lamb. Uh, could, could I ask again the folks at home to mute their mics? Thank you. Uh, I, I do have another question, I, but I, I want to give the other members a chance if anyone else has questions first. Uh, well, I have one other question, which is uh, primarily for Mill City Groves. Um, you mentioned the other uh, urban farm sites that you have, which are I, I know well. Um, would the intent, assuming this project is successful and moves forward, would be the, the intent be to continue with those other sites, or would those other sites become surplus or, or in some manner at risk if you move the whole operation to this one? We the plan currently is that we would continue to farm on those sites. So each of those sites really has a very different um, setup and, and very different um, amenities that they provide to our kind of holistic growing program. So we do have um, a site that's one acre at the University of Massachusetts um, that has a greenhouse. And so, you know, that's where we do a lot of seedling starting. We actually work with a lot of other growers in the, the community that use that greenhouse as well. Um, and then we have a, a just under five acre property um, that is on Pawtucket Boulevard. Um, that is where we do the bulk of our growing for our mobile market, our CSA program, and the food that goes into our education programs. Um, after you know acquiring this property and doing um, some soil testing, remediation of the soil, and really getting that space ready to grow, I, I imagine it would be several years before we're kind of up and running and really producing there and then can assess, um, you know, what what that means in terms of additional um, production and how, and but there will be some, you know, CSA programs and community food programs run out of this site specifically. So um, in where we're looking ahead and doing our planning, additional space for production really is needed. And there is, you know, there's definitely in all of our programs um, more demand than we have supply for. So this would give us the ability to really increase the amount of um, customers and residents that we can serve through those programs. Okay. Thank you. Do we have any other comments? So, ask that question. It's, um, it, it's a little weird question, but I, it just lingers in my head. Um, so you have uh, 1413 and 1415, it's like two lot uh, kind of uh, properties. Um, First question is that, uh, the, do you really need those two? Are they really connected together or can you just get one? The other question is, do you have a um, competitor or is there anybody else that's looking to purchase this place? So in the early 2000s, the back acreage of this parcel was sold off to a developer. We know that um, that if this falls through, um, that there are developers, you know, already ready to, to go uh, to develop this property. So, uh, which would be a shame to see happen. 
Uh, these two properties are part and parcel. They're integral to each other. They provide the critical connections to the state forest. So you can't do one without the other. And in fact, throughout our negotiations with the owners, we have, we have insisted that, um, in fact, we have demanded that we will not do one without the other. That is how critical these two parcels are interlocked for this process, this project to happen. Thank you. Do we, do we have any other questions from members? All right. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Our next item this evening uh, is an application for 555 Merrimack Street. The Coalition for a Better Acre has applied to the Community Preservation Committee seeking $500,000 of CPA funds for a community housing and outdoor recreation project. The applicant proposes to redevelop the vacant building at 555 Merrimack Street into 27 units of affordable housing and supportive services for people with substance abuse disorders. I believe we have uh, someone here to speak on behalf of this project. Good evening, my name is Russell Pandras. I am the project manager with Coalition for a Better Acre for the 555 Merrimack Street project. CBA has been building and operating affordable housing in Lowell since 1982. We have a portfolio of 520 units across 13 properties in Lowell and Haverhill with nine units under construction in Dracut. Could you go to the next sl slide please? Thank you. Um, we have a number, number of project goals for the 555 Merrimack Street project. Overall, we're trying to provide social and community supports within affordable housing to create a better health and housing system for individuals with substance use disorders. Next slide, please. In 2014, the Substance Use and Housing National Leadership Forum convened, um, which was co-hosted by the Corporation for Supportive Housing and the National Council for Behavioral Health. This forum was, fa was funded by the Melville Charitable Trust, which has focused on the singular goal of ending homelessness, which we know the city of Lowell has sought to address as well. National thought leaders would agree with us that recovery will never fully be successful without stable housing. Next slide, please. This forum identified many of the barriers to housing, to housing persons with substance use disorders. These barriers are present in Massachusetts and have been corroborated by Lowell House staff when discussing the housing needs of clients with substance use disorders. The 555 Merrimack Street project addresses all these and seeks to create a replicable model that other housing and substance and housing and addiction service providers can follow to build partnerships and affordable housing for persons with SUDs. Next slide. Um, our supportive service plan, uh, we are planning to extend the continuum of care for persons with substance use disorders. Uh, attached to this property will be, um, will include a resident service budget of a little less than $53,000. That will provide 40 and a half hours of resident services, which might fluctuate on a weekly basis, but overall breaks down into 14,000 hours annually of recovery coach services. 700 hours annually of case management services, along with a budget, a set aside budget for both community programming initiated by CBA or Lowell House staff, as well as tenant led programming. Next slide, please. Uh, this project is highly ready to proceed. We've received, we've received all local permits other than the building permit itself as well as state permits, including the Massachusetts Historical Commission, Commission's project notification form. Next slide. Uh, this is a breakdown of the sources of funding for this project. Uh, in the interest of time, I'm not going to go over every one of these sources, but I'm happy to answer questions in more detail uh, from the committee afterwards. Overall, it's a 13.1 million total development cost. Um, just of note, I think there was an error on the memo to the board 
um, which referenced an old budget from the eligibility form, uh, and the updated budget is included in the full application. Next slide. Uh, uses of funding is broken down here as well. Um, direct construction and general development comprises the bulk of it. Uh, each of those lines includes a 5% contingency. Next slide. And we've assembled a experienced project team in developing affordable housing and specifically passive house construction, which we are designing this project as. Um, Icon Architecture is our architect, which has experience designing and building passive house buildings, multifamily buildings. They just finished the 98 unit Finch project in Cambridge. Um, and LD Russo is a certified passive house builder as our, as our general contractor. Uh, we have not yet executed contract with LD Russo, but they have been assisting us in um, budgeting um, throughout the pre-development process. Uh, and we're hoping to work with them throughout construction. Next slide, please. Um, overall, for the timeline, um, just some highlights. We are expecting construction uh, with the support of this board. We are expecting construction to start in April 2022. Uh, we, we are projecting a 14-month construction period, so construction is expected to end June 2022, and then, sorry, June 2023, and then we expect to be fully leased up and stabilized uh, by October 2023. So uh, we will have, uh, we're expecting to have a new building at 555 Merrimack Street with, with tenants in that building being supported by Lowell House staff um, by fall within two years. Next slide. And then a little bit more about passive house design. Um, I don't wanna say this is a fairly new design, but I think this will be the first passive house building in the city of Lowell. Um, it has been a type of design used by architects for, for a while now. I, I don't think it's as, as prevalent or as widely talked about as LEED certifiable um, or other energy efficient design programs. Um, but in general, it, the goal is to minimize the number of exterior penetrations in the building, install high-end insulation, um, and use advanced mechanical systems to encourage and create heat transfer throughout the building. Um, overall, um, I think the main line that we wanna focus on for Passive House is that based on our modeling, we're expecting a 75% less uh, site intense energy use than a comparable property, uh, comparable multifamily property based on the national average. Next slide. Um, so we meet, uh, we're applying to the CPA because we believe we meet um, goal two of the CPA's open space and recreation goals and goal threes and four, goal, goals three and four of the community housing goals. Uh, we are highly ready to proceed next spring and uh, we're hoping the CPA can help, um, can support our project. Uh, next slide. Um, specifically for the CPA request that uh, 4555 Merrimack, we are requesting half a million dollars, 27,000 of which would go to landscaping improvements along the Western Canal, Canal Walk, um, specifically plantings, additional lighting, um, and improving that area, uh, lar largely for, for additional plantings along that area, which is fairly sparse right now. Uh, the remaining amount would go to um, a combination of direct construction, which is the majority of it, um, and then a small portion would go to seed um, a capitalized reserve for the residents themselves to apply to. Uh, we are seeking to capitalize this reserve to $50,000. We're asking for half that from the CPA, um, and the goal would be to have residents, in the event that they need to return to acute treatment, uh, also known as detox, they could apply to this fund uh, to help pay for the rent if they're having issues um, with income during that period of time. And I think that's it. I'd be happy to take questions. Thank you very much.
Do we have anyone else in the chamber who would like to speak on this project? <coughs> Thank you. My name is Claire Ricker. I'm the real estate director for Coalition for a Better Acre. I'm speaking in support of this truly innovative um, project that we're looking to do uh, on Merrimack Street, which I know is an economic development uh, priority for the city. Um, this is a project that is completely shovel ready. We will be building it next spring. Um, and it, I think it really represents an opportunity um, for CBA certainly um, to move into uh, kind of a new area for us um, in building this t style of supportive housing. We have recently built 80 units for veterans preference uh, in the city of Haverhill and now in the city of Dracut. Um, and we've done that using very innovative techniques, including especially in Dracut historic preservation. And we're looking at this as a great opportunity to bring the first passive house, first passive house design to Lowell, while at the same time serving Lowell's um, population um, in a way that uh, uh, is impactful and we believe will make a difference. Thank you so much. Thank you. Do we have anyone um, online uh, virtually who would like to speak on this proposal? Hearing, hearing none, do we have questions from the members? Adam. Go ahead, Member Shea. Thank you. I'd like to just make a comment. Uh, I was very impressed with what I just heard. But I have a, uh, uh, I guess I have a question that I'd like to ask uh, anyone to comment on. And it is the development up in Gorham Street, is the same construction team uh, involved in this development that built the, uh, the units up in Gorham Street? Are you talking about 305 Gorham? Um, the old St. Peter's Church, as we call it. Yes, but right across from the courthouse, the old courthouse. So it's, we, we have a different development team than the property owned by CBA at 305 Gorham Street. Um, we have a different general contractor as well as a different architect. Okay, no, I was just curious because I was really impressed with what you did up in Gorham Street. That's all. We are, That's yeah, we are, we are actually working with them on a, the, the architect that did that project on, on another project. So not, not this one in particular, but they, they, they will be involved. In, no, in I was a, just curious. I project. thought that that project that you built up at Gorham Street was, was, came out pretty nice and you did it quickly on time. And I was also happy to hear that uh, so far you have uh, all your local permits for this building. Yes, we do. Yeah, I thought that was a, okay. That's it, Mr. Chair. I just wanted to make a comment. Uh, I was impressed with the uh, presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions or comments from members? I, I have clarification. Yep, go ahead. Um, I believe the applicant touched on this, but I just want to confirm, is it true that all of the 27 units will be income restricted? Yes, they will. We are, um, part of the financing for this project is low income housing tax credits. Um, all 27 units will be at or below 60% area median income with a large chunk of those being lower than that. Thank you. That answers my question. That's all. Uh, so I had a, um, there's going to be a similar, you have heard this question before. Um, it, it, we did ask about phasing. And so is, is there, um, based on your estimated kind of project costs and expenditures, uh, it, is it, 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 do you think that it's feasible that, that this project, project for purposes of CPA funding could be phased, i.e. a portion of it this year and a portion of it in some future year is that is that realistic based on your um, expectations of how you're going to be um, uh, funding the project uh, ideally we would get the whole, all the funding now um, I think it would be it would make the closing process a little bit more simple um, but I think we would be open to phasing the project or phasing funding for the project from the CPA okay. thank you any other questions from members I have a couple, if not. Um, you mentioned that um, you were 
shovel ready, and certainly with respect to permits, that's clear and that's helpful. Are you also shovel ready with respect to all the other financing for the project? Has the state approved all the tax credits and, and other state funding for this project at this point? Yes, so we have received um, state commitments for tax credits, subsidy, and vouchers. Um, we submitted an application to the Federal Home Loan Bank of Boston this last May, June, sometime this summer. Uh, we are waiting a response for, on that. Um, that was an application for $300,000. Um, that is included in the project's pro forma. Um, I don't know, Dylan, if you could go back to uh, slide seven. I'm having a hard time seeing. Um, so there should be a pie category there saying um, sponsor loan um, and in parentheses grant equity for $403,000. Um, so a portion of that is the Federal Home Loan Bank of Boston's application and the remaining 103,000 was a grant we received from Capital One uh, for pre-development work. Um, so we are holding that as a sponsor loan right now. Um, the other grant application we have submitted is to Mass Housing's Center for Community Recovery Innovations to help seed the recovery loan fund uh, for, for $20,000. Um, so those are the remaining, other than CPA, those are the remaining two funding commitments that we are waiting to hear back from. Okay, thank you. Um, and the, your application indicated that you do not currently own the site. Is that just because of the mechanics of a special purpose entity that needs to own it or? No, it, we do own the site. Do. I'm not sure okay. how that was, why that was conveyed that way. Sure. We have a quick claim deed owning the site. Um, it's owned by an LLC, 555 Merrimack Street LLC, uh, which is currently wholly owned by CBA, but we will have an investor um, uh, involved in, 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 the, in the entity, in the, in the building's entity. Thank you. Uh, I believe uh, our next order of business this evening is Community Preservation Committee dues. So the Community Preservation Coalition has extended an invitation to, uh, for us to join the Community Preservation Coalition. I understand we had a free membership for a period of time. Uh, but uh, now membership dues of $2,875, uh, which can be allocated from the administrative funding of the CPA program. Uh, member communities receive technical assistance, CPA training sessions, and uh, the ability to attend regional conferences. Additionally, the Community Preservation Coalition advocates on behalf of CPCs at the state level, which is pretty critical to maintaining the program. Uh, and uh, coalition membership is not required but I guess, um, are you looking for a vote of the membership regarding this or? I don't think that has to be made yet. I was just bringing it up for discussion. Um, I think it could be voted on with the deliberations at the end, unless um, the committee wants to make a decision sooner. I guess we open up for comment and discussion from the members. I'd say that it sounds like a great opportunity to learn more about the program. Um, I would absolutely advocate for staying uh, within the umbrella of the, the parent organization here. Yeah, I, I'm going to, I concur with, um, with member Budenheis. I, I think it's, a. Uh, given the, uh, the amount of funding we are likely to see back in the matching grant being a part of the lo basically lobbying entity that's going to be pushing to keep those percentages high. Is, is in our best interest and I'm, I, I, I certainly think that twenty eight hundred dollars is cheap at, at twice the price for uh, for being able to have somebody go out and try to get us more money <laughs> would you want to make that in the form of a motion yes I will, I will move that we uh, that the committee approve the expenditure of the uh, the funds to to for, for the membership and the community preservation coalition second we have a second thank you do we have any other discussion on the motion from the members either here or virtual I guess, uh, do we need a roll call for that or would that? 
I guess since it is financial, why don't we do a roll call? We can do a roll call. Yep. Chairman Bakey? Uh, yes. Vice Chair Slagel? Yes. Member Butenice? Yes. Member Liang? Yes. Member Shea? Uh, yes. Member DePeza? Yes. Member Gallivan? Yes. Thank you all. All right, uh, and our last uh, order of business this evening is to review the proposed 2022 Community Preservation Committee schedule, which uh, was emailed to all the members um, in advance of this meeting. Uh, the proposed schedule, and, and thank you uh, very much, Dylan, for putting this together for us. The proposed schedule actually lists a fair number of meeting dates, um, likely more than we may in the end need, but since we are still learning a little bit about how the annual cycle is going to work for us, it will give us, uh, I guess, sort of advance notice of when we might meet to plan around, and if we don't have business on any of these days, I presume we can always uh, cancel the meetings. But it proposes to meet twice a month from the period of October through January the, for the, the process that we're involved in right now of uh, hearing applications and ultimately deliberating on them uh, if needed. And then um, sort of once, once a month just before and just after that and, and once every other month for the what would presumably be the slow period in the spring and early summer. Um, I guess do we have any discussion from the members about the proposed schedule? It works for me. Seems fine. Okay. Yeah, I, I agree. I think it's it's better to put these on the calendar, as as we all know, until the the agenda is posted. They're not official meetings, and we can just if we don't need them, we can cancel them. But I think it's better to have them and not need them than the opposite. Okay. Motion to approve. Thank you. Do we have a second? Second. Okay. I don't think we need a roll call for that. So all those in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? All right. That motion passes. So uh, do we have any other comments from the members or any other business? Oh, hearing none, I, I guess before we close, I just would like to thank, uh, thank the members. And it feels like uh, we're off to a good start here in terms of uh, the application process. And uh, this was a warm up. We only had three this evening. I think we have five or six in the next two meetings. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, hopefully it will go as smoothly. And it's, I uh, also want to extend an appreciation to all the folks who have applied and all the folks that are watching um, and paying attention to, to this uh, committee. This is a uh, particularly important that we have that uh, engagement because this committee is, this whole program is really meant to be grounded in the wants, needs, and interests of the residents of the city. So uh, the more who can participate in the more, man the more ways, the better. Uh, we have nothing else this evening. I guess, can we have a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Second. All right, thank you. I assume that will pass unanimously. So thank you all very much. Thank you, bye. Thank you. Good night, everybody.